In the blink of an eye, the joyous atmosphere of Christmas Eve in 1998 was shattered by a devastating incident that forever changed the lives of Lou, Doi Fong and her family. A day out at Disneyland turned into a nightmare when a metal cleat weighing 8 pounds broke loose from a ride and struck her husband, Lou on Phil Dawson, and herself in the face. While Lou miraculously survived, Luan tragically suffered serious injuries resulting in the loss of his life. This heart-wrenching incident triggered an extensive investigation to the circumstances surrounding the tragedy, leading to a significant change in legislation and safety protocols. So, how on earth did this happen? Let's talk about it. This is Death at Disneyland, the infamous death of Luan Phil Dawson. Luan Phil Dawson was born in Vietnam on the 28th of August 1964. He was a smart man and was always destined for great things from an early age. As a young man, Luan moved to the United States of America where he quickly rose through the ranks of the ever-growing Microsoft Corporation to become their senior computer programmer and test engineer at the age of 33. Whilst in America, he met his future wife, Lou Thoi Fong, who he went on to have a son with. The family lived in Duval, Washington, and for Christmas of 1998, decided to take their son and grandchild to Disneyland, California. The day was going as expected, when at an unknown time, the family decided to board the sailing ship Columbia ride, which is where their nightmare began. The sailing ship Columbia ride, a prominent attraction at Disneyland, has always captivated visitors with its nostalgic charm. Opening to the public on June the 14th, 1958, this replica of the first ever American ship to travel the globe instantly became a beloved fan favourite. The boat's meticulous detailing and craftsmanship transports guests back in time to the golden era of 18th century sailing. Departing every 25 minutes from the frontier landing in Frontierland, the 110 feet long Columbia ship awaits eager passengers. Powered by a compressed natural gas engine, the Columbia set sail on a captivating voyage along the rivers of America. As the ship glides through the waters, passengers enjoy the captain's entertaining commentary, along with nautical music that sets the mood. The journey includes an exciting moment when cannons are fired at Fort Wilderness, on Tom Sawyer's Island, immersing guests in the adventure. The ride is one of the tamest in the park, with little to no restrictions, and until Christmas Eve of 1998, had an impeccable safety record. Sometime during the day of the 24th of December 1998, the ship was making its way around the rivers of America, ready to dock at Frontierland to pick up the next guests. On the platform was Luan Dawson and his wife Lou, and their young son and grandchild who were all in good spirits and looking forward to sailing the Columbia, but something wasn't right. The boat was sailing too fast towards the dock, so, thinking on her feet, Assistant General Manager Christine Carpenter attached the mooring line to a metal cleat located on the dock. A docking cleat, also known as a mooring cleat, is a device used to secure a boat or ship to a dock or pier. It consists of a metal or wooden structure with arms or horns that serve as attachment points for ropes and lines. The cleat's purpose is to provide a secure and stable connection between the vessel and the dock, allowing for safe and reliable mooring. It plays a crucial part in ensuring the stability and safety of the boat or ship whilst it's stationary at the dock. Due to the momentum of the ship, once the mooring line was wrapped around the cleat, the rope stretched taut. This caused tension, which then caused the 8 pound cleat to rip loose from the dock, flinging 15 feet into the crowd waiting to board the ship at a massive speed. It flew towards Luan and struck him in the face and neck. This tore part of his jaw off as he fell to the ground unconscious. The cleat also hit Lou, paralysing her face. Christine Carpenter was also injured during the incident. The scene, to put it likely, was a horrific bloody mess. All three were transported to hospital, where Luan was now brain dead and was put on life support. His wife Lou was critically injured, but expected to recover, and Christine remained hospitalised with leg injuries. Sadly, a few days after the gruesome incident, Luan was taken off life support and pronounced dead on the 28th of December 1998. The attraction was then shut down, and an investigation was launched. The first area of investigation was the cleat, 
The crucial question was whether the cleat was intended for stopping the boat or solely for securing it after the docking process was complete. If the cleat was repeatedly misused, it could have endured excessive strain and stress, resulting in the accident. The report stated, The normal procedure when the ship is coming in too fast is to not secure the mooring line. Instead, workers should let the ship overshoot the dock and then reverse. Christine attached the line to the cleat claiming that she did not know that the helmsman planned to overshoot the dock. Investigators raised inquiries into whether Christine received comprehensive training and found that the 30-year-old assistant manager, who had assumed her position only two months prior, was temporarily substituting for a regular ride operator at the time of the incident. Disney spokesman Ray Gomez claimed investigators could check the records and see that she was properly trained, but the records were inconclusive. The first officer to report on the scene was Orange County's Richard McAnally. According to him, he was made to wait in the conference room for a long time before he could examine the scene, which at first did not look good for Disneyland, as they had cleaned the scene before they let him go in. However, this was disregarded by the Anaheim police who said that Disney did not obstruct justice. They said, We also determined that Disneyland didn't clean it up to destroy evidence of criminal conduct. They cleaned it up in my opinion as being the ranking person there, because it was unsightly. Disney backed this up and defended its decision to clean up the accident site before the police arrival, stating that it was done to minimise the shock and disturbance for other guests. The incident involving the Columbia ship sparked a nationwide discussion about theme park safety, and a wrongful death lawsuit was launched by the family of the victim. This led to significant changes in California's legal system. Legislation was introduced to ensure independent inspections of theme parks like Disneyland, as well as mandatory inspections, which played a crucial role in investigating multiple incidents at Disneyland. One of the most damning findings in the lawsuit was that Disney used an inappropriate rope. They used nylon instead of the original hemp rope for docking the Columbia. The nylon rope had greater elasticity and braking strength, which contributed the cleat to be propelled into the crowd. They used this rope to save money. They claim that Disney was aware of rope breakages, but failed to replace the nylon rope with a safer hemp rope. It was also concluded that Disney failed to train its employees on proper docking procedures. This includes Christine, who was responsible that day for securing the ship. Other findings included lack of communication between staff members and inadequate cleat security. The family of Luan reached a settlement with Disneyland for an undisclosed sum. The settlement was estimated to be around 20 to 25 million dollars. Disneyland also received a maximum penalty fine for equipment misuse and inadequate training of the employee responsible for docking the ship. As a result of the Columbia incident, Disneyland implemented several changes to its ride operations, including the adoption of bell signals, revised docking procedures for the ship, and a thorough review and update of all ride procedures. Lead operators were reinstated on most rides, a position with extensive experience that had been phased out on many attractions, including the Columbia. After the case, Lou recovered but had life-altering injuries. She has remained out of the public eye ever since. I hope her and her children are doing better today. As for the Columbia, after some updates, the ship reopened and continues to be one of Disneyland's most popular attractions to this day. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. This is not an AI channel, I do all of this myself, the research, writing, editing, thumbnails, etc. And I upload every Thursday. So if you enjoy my work, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.